Hey guys, how's everybody doing? All right. Hey, uh, we are live. Make sure that you let me know that you're listening online. Uh, but uh, we do have a couple of, of things, announcements is that um, this past, past yesterday uh, on Facebook, uh, we had saw that uh, we had seen that uh, Reverend Bouchong had kind of gone missing and uh but i did see a facebook post today just now that uh about a little after midnight he was found and in, in safe so thank you for your prayers um for those that didn't know and hey, he was he had gone and and uh he was he's found again hey patsy good morning uh you and eddie love you guys Hope you're having a good Labor Day weekend. Tell those daughters of yours I said hi. But uh, it's all it's it's been good. And uh, one of the things I want to before we get going, uh, before we get going, I want to <laughs> thank you for your grace yesterday last week uh, as I butchered my song, and uh, I felt like I was like, oh no. It's it was terrible, but uh, what I'm gonna do is that I just for my peace of mind is I'm gonna play this thing again, and it's gonna be the the non butchered version of it. So I hope you. Got Filled with strife to break the ties that bind and set the captives free. This man said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And all he asks is that you just believe. Let me tell you about. Oh 
All right, I'm glad. Uh, well, there it is. Uh, on a cross on a hill. And uh, so I want to say, everybody, tell hi to everybody, and, uh, and uh, we're going to get started here shortly. Um, we do have uh, had some unspoken prayer requests that have been brought to my attention. Also, uh, it was a praise this week. Uh, uh, my mom and dad watched their kids, and Jackie and I got a chance to get away for a night. And uh, it was a, it was such a blessing, such so needed. And uh, so I would say, uh, folks that have been married, folks that are married, make sure you take with kids. Make sure you take some time for yourself. Uh, it's such it's so needed, and it, it's such a time to reconnect and uh, remember remember how it is to, how it, how it feels to be married and uh so um that was awesome thanks to my mom and dad and uh so we're gonna i'm gonna kick on it kick it on up here make sure you still say hi in the comments and also uh we're gonna try something a little different and it's gonna be a messenger group so everybody that comments in our live streams I'm going to put you in a, a group to where I can say, hey, make sure we're going live just as a reminder. Uh, if you would like that, make sure you comment in the in the uh, in the post as well. And uh, Frank and Ella, you're already in there. And Patsy, eh, sorry about your luck. You're already in there, too. So you didn't know about it, but you, you just you just you're in there. And I'm not going to butcher it. I'm not going to spam you. Uh, I'll just do some, make sure we have some announcements and some reminders and just something brief like that. So uh, that's what we got. And I'm going to, uh, to kick it on over to the, to the big screen. All right. See you guys. All right. How is everybody doing this morning? It was a it was a nice chilly morning this morning. Yep, it was it was fall and and we we enjoyed it and uh, that's this is my time. I like the fall. I like early spring and fall. Uh, winter, take it. Summer, you can take it. But uh, this is my kind. This is my kind of weather. So I so I'm comfortable about a month out of the year. Because it seems like now it's gone from, it went from winter to summer, and then from summer to winter. So we didn't, I, I've kind of skipped my favorite seasons. But uh, but this was really nice. I enjoyed it. Good sleeping weather. So uh, uh, before we get started, uh, uh, for those who didn't know, uh, uh, Reverend Bouchon had, had went missing uh, for uh, uh, about... About 12 hours, they, they, they went missing on at noon yesterday and was found at about just after midnight uh, this morning and uh, uh, found safe and sound. He was headed towards food line and we don't, I don't know any more details than that. So, uh, but thank you for your prayers. Those that were praying online, those that knew about it and was praying, uh, uh, Reverend Bouchon, former pastor here, so uh, he holds a, a special place and in, in, in our in our thoughts and prayers as well. So we're praying for uh, him and Peggy, and uh, and that that everything's going okay. Uh, secondly, we have some unspoken prayer requests that have been brought to my attention. So uh, so we definitely want to remember those. Uh, next, we have a we have a praise. Is that uh, uh, a praise for uh, my mom and dad watched uh, watched our kids on Friday and Friday night, and Jackie and I got a chance to head down to Lynchburg and uh, just to relax. And uh, we met went up with some friends and and just had a good time. We went to an Airbnb, and uh, the the lady that that put us up was was nice and. And uh, it was just, it was just relaxing. And then we were back to the grind yesterday. So, uh, but, but it was nice. Uh, do we have any praises or prayer requests that while we're, while we're on the line, if we have any private, just say private and we can figure it out at the end of the, 
uh, of the uh, service. For those that are online, if you let, let me know that if you have any prayer requests, I'll make sure I, I always check those out before, I, before we get off to make sure that we don't miss anybody. Um, all right. Uh, praying women of Adai will be meeting, uh, just to let you know, meeting Tuesday at noon. And uh, they're continuing their study of Hebrews. Uh, I, I, I looked in on mom the other day and she's like, I'm studying Melchizedek. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Do you got about a month on them? <laughs> but uh, they're studying the book of Hebrews and then they're going to eat something. What are y'all going to eat? Soup. Soup, because it's supposed to be uh, supposed to be about this kind of temperature. So, uh, so hopefully they won't eat it all. So I'll have be able to maybe have some leftovers over for the pastor. I'm a soup guy. I like that. But uh, all right, uh, any other announcements? Um, just just to put on your radar for this is just church fifth is that uh, September is our business meeting month. And uh, so we're going to have to, we'll figure that out. Uh, I talked to Erica and Erica says we're doing, uh, doing okay financially. So that's, that's been a, a that's been an answered prayer. So just uh, keep that in mind and we'll, we can discuss the, the particulars off camera uh, at the end, but just let you know that, that this is, uh, this is our month just to be, keep it in your, keep it in your mind. Um, all right, we're going to open our hymnals to hymn number 730, and we're going to sing the first and last verse, 730, and I'll remember, because I sing quietly, that I'll turn the mic so it's not facing right at me, and, and so I don't drown everybody out. But uh, we're going to sing, stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Stand if you're able. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Live high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead, till every soul is vanquished, and Christ the Lord in the verse 4. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the strife will not be long. Take a voice of battle, the next the victor song. To him who overcometh a shall be he with the king of glory shall reign eternally and if you just want to put your books down like that our final hymn is going to be hymn number 731 so that'll give you a little bit thank you for standing For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So easy today to say he is my enemy or she is my enemy. Whether they're our leaders, whether our president, whether it's a speaker, whether it's our governor, it's easy to say, hey, they're the evil. They're our enemies. But as Paul so eloquently reminds us in Ephesians, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. He had to remind the Corinthians, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, 
but they're mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. They're not carnal. We're in a spiritual warfare. And it's a warfare we're prepared for. It's a warfare that the church was built for. It's a warfare. When Jesus said upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This is not a passive organism that Christ built. This is, a, this is an offensive organism. This is an offensive. That means we take the battle to Satan. We don't curl up in our fetal position and say, don't close me. Please don't hurt me. Please don't take anything away. No. We stand up, stand up for Jesus. As the song says, ye soldiers of the cross, lift high as royal banner. It must not suffer loss. And in a day and age where we are searching for someone, for something to hold the line, to hold the standard, We are so desperate that if someone comes along that holds up one that looks like our standard, but not quite, then we will be willing to follow that because we're so desperate and there's no one standing up and holding the line, standing up for Jesus, standing up and holding the standard. So there have been a lot of counterfeit standards that have been raised. And I could go, I could, I, that's a sermon in and of itself. I could list all those things that, hey, yeah, let's get behind this or let's get behind that. And while good causes, not Christian, not Bible-based, I think we're going to stick with, stick with the Bible. In a, in, a, in a day and age when folks trust the media more than they trust the master. They trust Hollywood rather than the Holy Word. I think I'm going to stay with the Bible. Because we're in a spiritual warfare. We're in a battle. And his church is battle-tested. We were made for such a time as this. We're going to be in Ephesians chapter 6. And this is a first installment of a lengthy series where we go through spiritual warfare and then the, we break down the whole armor of God one by one. And really dig in depth. So if you're looking for a fluff series, if you're looking for a series that it's not going to challenge you, if you're looking for a series that you just want to be able to, to put it on the, your TV or just put it on your computer and walk away and do other things, this is not it. This is going to challenge you. This is going to, we're going to dig deep. Because... We owe it to our commander-in-chief to give it our best. So we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse 10. And this first sermon is going to be the first three verses of that, but I'm going to read the whole thing to get it, make sure we give it context. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of, of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, Stand, therefore, having your loins girt up with truth, 
and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. The very first word of this passage, finally, Paul has been going through a letter of the church of Ephesus and he's hit on a lot of different things. And then he gets to this part and he says, finally, and then he gives us some admonitions. Finally, we have reached a major section. This is it. This is the piste de resistance. This is it. Like, pay attention to this. He challenges, he challenges the, the folks at Ephesus. He challenges us to open our spiritual eyes and see what's going on. I'm not sure that we always recognize it, but we're always engaged in spiritual warfare. We're always engaged. We're engaged when we get up. We, we think, what was, what's the verse? For be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary, the devil, walking around as a warring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So he is looking to devour you. He is looking to get you away from the herd. Did you hear that? Get you away from the herd? That's right. Because what's happened in this pandemic is folks have gotten away from the herd. And what that does, that makes you vulnerable. Like, well, pastor, I, 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 I do everything online. Well, if you're able to get out, we need to get out and forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. If you can't, then this is the next best thing. But this is not a replacement. Did you hear me, old folks in Facebook land? This is not a replacement of forsaking, of assembling ourselves together. It's not. It's what we have at this time. If you're unable to go out, if you're immune compromised, if you're in the high risk area and you just, you can't go out, then this is the next best thing. But stay engaged. Stay engaged right here in the comments. You can engage one another virtually. You can reach out on Messenger. You can reach, for those here, we can reach out and talk to one another here. We can reach out by phone. Have something going on. Do not handle it alone. Because we don't have to. Because if one person in the body hurts, we all hurt. And one of the things that we as pastors sometimes forget as we're quoting uh, Hebrews 10, 25, is we say, forsaking, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is. And then we kind of skip over the next part. And then we go, and so much the day and so much the more as we see the day approaching. Well, that part we skip over and we brush over it. It says exhorting one another. That means lifting one another up. That means if I'm struggling, somebody puts their hand under my, well, not now, but they just, they say, hurry, right, get up, keep your distance. Their old self and help me up. But lift one another up. I mean, I don't know. I can't tell you how good it is to see when I hear somebody says, you know what, this is what the Lord did for me this week. This is how the Lord met me this week. This is what we're doing. 
Because if, if we were not meant to do this together, then why did Christ institute the church? If I can live a Christian life in the middle of the will of God, outside of the church, then why did Christ institute the church? Did he make a mistake? No, he didn't. And I will say this, Christ is revealed to the individual. Christ is celebrated in the church. It's glorified through the church. So if you're out there today and you're not attached to a local assembly, if you're not a part of a local assembly, and if you're in Nelson County, then this, this right here is home for you. Every one of us needs a home because we're in a battle. Everybody needs that band of brothers and sisters to do spiritual warfare with. Say, but yeah, I listen to, I listen to the church online, the big church, the mega church online out of California or out of Texas. I listen to that. But let me tell you, when you're, when you're in a spiritual warfare and, you're, and, you, and, and you have that midnight call, is that mega church going to have somebody come and sit with you? Is that mega church going to have somebody help you bring help you with meals or rides? Is that is that mega church going to have somebody that you can pick up the phone and call and talk? Local assembly body of believers. Would it be the way I would have set it up? Probably not. But I'm not God. His ways are far above my ways and his thoughts are way above my thoughts and this is how God decided to do it so we don't have the authority to change that and folks are here they're, I'm preaching to the choir praise the Lord for you guys for those that are online that are unable to attend due to whatever physical reason, health reasons, praise the Lord. For the ones that are just choosing not to go because this is easy, this is for you. And this is a, this is a call to come home. This is a call. This is the dinner bell ringing. We're eating right here. This is our spiritual food. It's supper time. And we're eating. And we want you to eat with us. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. We're in a spiritual warfare because the, the world is saying this is the same. The world is saying, you don't need to go. You don't need to be hooked up with other Christians. You can do this on your own. That's the world saying it. The world is saying, you can just pick yourself up by your bootstraps and do it yourself. You can provide. You can do this. You, 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 I, I, I. And once you hear it, you, you, if you hear it long enough and loud enough, you start to believe it. And that's that counterfeit standard. If I hear one more person talk about the new normal, I'm going to have to ask for forgiveness. This is not the new normal. We need to, the Bible says, stand in the way and see and ask for the old paths. Where is that good way? And ye will find rest for your souls. I think I'll take church, imperfect as it is, over anything else this world will give us. This is the time. 
This is the time. This is going to be a long series. This has been one word, finally. We, in order to stand firm for God, we have to be strong, right? And what does the Bible say is our strength? Our strength comes from the hills, right? Our strength is in Christ, right? For Christians, the joy of the Lord is our strength. It says here, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Our strength comes from a person. Be strong. That means to be empowered, to be strengthened. It has a context of a deathbed patient getting well. Being made strong. And I don't know about you, but that kind of sounds what, like what we need. It's like the day the church was on life support. And we need to be strong in the Lord. We need that spiritual healer. We need that great physician to come in and say, come unto me, all ye are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come unto me. Lay down your cross and follow me. Did Jesus deal with the pandemic? Absolutely. Well, he dealt with leprosy. And I don't know about you, but it seemed like leprosy was a lot worse than what we're going through. I don't know. Bloody arms and flesh eating stuff. I don't know. <clears throat> but what this tells us is that in ourself, in our own strength, we're weak. We're weak. We are weak emotionally. We are weak in the way we think. We are weak in our spirit. We are weak when it comes to temptation and sin. We are weak in our ability to control our own wills. We are simply weak and we need help. So it says, be strong in the Lord. This is not the only time that this is said, be strong, right? Be strong, be of good cheer. Be strong. We need to have the spiritual strength to ask for help, to lean on the one. Our strength comes from a person. Our strength comes from a provision. This is, you go back to the verse here. It says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So we got finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That word power has the context of dominion, which it speaks of the power to complete and perfect something. And that word might means force and strength. So it says, find me, my brother, be strong in the one who is strong. Be strong in the Lord and in the dominion, in the power to make perfect strength and might. This speaks of someone who has absolute ability talks about be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. God is the biggest. 
and he's on our team. That describes the power we need. When we go up against in a spiritual warfare, we need that power. How do we get that power? <laughs> yeah, great, Pastor. You say we need that power, and we say, oh, there is that power. Then how do we need, how do we get that power? We get it the same way we get everything else in the Bible. How did you get saved? You got saved by faith, by grace through faith. Faith. How, do you, how does anyone get healed? By faith. How does anyone walk down the street? By faith. How does anybody go to a mission field? By faith. How does anyone take a stand for God? By faith. How does anyone know that there is a heaven? By faith. How does anyone know that the penalty of sin, the wages of sin is death? By faith. It's by faith. By that confident trust in that thing we cannot see, but we've only been told about. You can't see faith. Ah, but you can. You can see faith. How do we see faith? I'll show you my faith by my works, James tells us. Because faith without works is dead. So let me, ask, let me tell you what this shows, what we've seen in the church today. Here's what we've seen of the church I believe that God saved us. I believe that God will protect us. And then we close down and don't, don't stand on that belief. I don't know about you, but we need to take God more seriously. We need to take his word seriously. We need to stand up. Now, is the pastor saying we need to go out and break the law? No, that's not what I'm saying. Unless it goes directly against the word of God, then absolutely. I'll stay with the Bible. But going out, in order to tell somebody about Jesus, I got to put a mask on, I'm okay with that. Small price to pay to go tell someone about Jesus. What do you think about that? Yeah. Now, if I'm just going out and I don't, I don't care about souls, what am I doing? That's a whole nother trip to the altar, right? We need to take a stand. We need that provision and how do we find that provision we get into his word there's so many christians out there today that think they know the word we used to call them fortune cookie christians because all the only word they know is out of a fort that seemed like fortune cookie wisdom or what they read on t-shirts and hats praise the lord for christian t-shirts and christian hats that cannot be the only thing. Today, we call them Facebook meme Christians. The only word they know is if somebody posted on Facebook. Sometimes that might be the only Bible verse that somebody reads. And I'm not talking lost people that see your feed. I'm talking about church folks. Might be the only time they see a Bible verse is if you post it. So keep posting. You don't know who it's reaching. Maybe it'll convict somebody to start reading their Bible. Because we're in a warfare. And we're in this together. As the body of Christ. 
The hand's not going off to war by itself. The, the head's not going off to war by itself. When, the, when we're in a spiritual battle, the body goes to war. Philippians 4.13. 4.13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. 2 Corinthians 2.14. Now, thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. I mean, those verses right there alone will make a back row Baptist shout. Okay. If you're on Facebook, I can't hear you shouting, but you can be hitting the amens and... Nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. In 1 Corinthians 15, 57, but thanks be to God, which give us up the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. When we stand in that power, we stand victorious. We stand, we stand, and when he gets the glory, I think of the Lion King. I like I like the Lion King, and one of the one of the scenes that that sticks out in my mind is Simba and. Uh, Nala has sneaked off to the elephant graveyard and the hyenas, they, uh, they're chasing them. And lion cubs are pretty defenseless. And they think they got exactly, got him exactly where he wants them. And Simba gets about ready to roar. And when he roars, there's this huge roar. It comes out. And then the picture fans where Simba is standing here looking at the hyenas and his dad, the king, is right behind him. That's us. That's us. Because without Christ, we go fight a spiritual warfare I'd be like, who are you? You weakling? And then they look. Well, that's why it's important to put on our whole armor. Because when we put it on our whole armor in the spiritual realm, they don't see us. They see the armor. They don't see Mike. They see the armor. And they say, I don't know who's wearing the armor, but I recognize the armor. The source of our strength is Christ. In Christ alone, my hope is built. In Christ alone is our salvation. In Christ alone is our strength. I don't know about you today. I don't know. It's, it hasn't been easy. And of course, all the spiritual people say, well, no, God never said it would be easy. It's easy to preach. It's hard to live. It's hard to live when there's so much anxiety, so much fear. It's hard to live when it's so divided. But we're not called to shy away when it gets hard. You know what we're called to do when it gets hard? The same thing we're called to do when it's easy. When it's hard, Christ said, when it's easy, Christ says, lay down your cross and follow me. When it's hard, Christ says, Lay down your cross, or lay down your burdens, pick up your cross and follow me. 
So when it's hard, we take up our cross and we follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I love the, the words of that song. What's the verse? The, the cross, the world before me, the cross behind me or something. The, though none go with me, I still will follow. And then at the end, it's no turning back. No turning back. That's, that's the Christ we serve. That's the Christ we serve. I had a wonderful study this week. Psalm 139. <sighs> wonderful. And it tells you how, how much God knows you. As he formed you in your mother's womb. Well, they say you formed my inward parts in my mother's womb. David talking here. He says, you know my down sitting and my uprising. That means you know all the parts of my life. You know the parts of my life when I'm resting. You know the parts of my life when I'm active. Wow. You know my thoughts are far off. He even knows what I think. He knows what I say. He knows everything. And I think one part of the, the scripture, it says that he's before us. He's behind us, before us, and he puts his hand upon us. I forget the exact quote of that. I'm sure if my wife is listening, she's going to put that in the comments. But it says he knows my past. He was with me in my past. He's with me in my future and his hand upon me in the present. I don't know if that didn't give you chills right there. Woo! Just a wonderful study. And that's the same God that says, take up your cross and follow me. Even during a pandemic, we're going to choose Jesus. We're going to choose to follow him. I I got nine pages of notes here. Not going to get all those, by the way. But here, he wants, Satan wants to take stuff from us. If we are spiritual, we're in a spiritual warfare, and he wants to take stuff from us. What does he want to take from the church? He wants to take our doctrine. He wants to take our truths. He wants to take our testimonies. He even wants to take our churches. He wants to take our families. He wants to take our memories. He wants to take our marriages, our children. He wants to take our spiritual power away. And what it, what it comes down to is he wants to take everything that God has given us. That's the battle that we're in. That's the battle. How do we do this? We need to recognize who the enemy is. We need to recognize who he is. And most importantly, we need to recognize who he's not. He's not that person we argue with on Facebook. He's not that person that we have a disagreement with. He's not that person that we, that we fight. Because when we fight one another, Satan just takes what he wants. Because we're not in a position to stop him. When we fight one another, we give up the high ground of love, of grace, and action. When we fight one another, 
We shed the armor of God and we walk in the flesh. When we fight one another, we tell everyone who sees it that the gospel is a lie. When we fight one another, we always lose. We lose even when we win. We need to recognize that we have an enemy. And it's not flesh and blood. We like, as humans, we like, as people, we like to put faces on our enemies. But it's not something we can see. Satan is our enemy. He is a deceiver. He is... He is a deceiver. He has been doing that throughout the ages. Even back in the garden. Yea, hath God said? And then you're like, ye should not surely die. For God knows that if you eat of the truth, your eyes will be opened and you will be as God, knowing good and evil. Satan deceives us. He deceives us when he lies about the consequences of sin. He deceives us when he casts doubt on the word of God. He deceives us when he casts doubt on the the goodness of God. I'm going to finish with be sober. Be vigilant. Be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, who? The devil. Not the president, not the speaker, not the governor, not your neighbor, not fellow Christians, the devil. As a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles, the schemes of the devil. I'm going to ask you, are you in him this morning? Are you in him? That means, are you saved this morning? Because all saved folks are in Christ. Now I'm going to ask you, if you answered no, then today needs to be that day you take care of it because you don't know if you have tomorrow. And whether you know it or not, we have a connection and, and we want you to be saved. We want you to go to heaven. For those that said, yes, I'm saved, I'm in him. Here's the question for you. Are you walking in him? Well, I'm saved. No, that's difference. Are you walking in him? Are you being strong in the Lord and in the power of his might? If we had to be really honest with ourselves, we would probably answer that sometimes. Some could even answer most of the times. But I'd be willing to stake everything I own that none of us could say all the time. So there are spiritual battles that we are fighting. Spiritual battles we're fighting individually. There's spiritual battles we're fighting ecclesiastically. So are you, Christian, going to be in the Lord, strong in the Lord, in the power of His might? Are we, Adal Baptist Church, going to be strong in the power of His might? Let's pray.
Almighty God, we come to you today. We thank you and praise you for who you are. We thank you so much for the, for the opportunity to share with one another this morning. We never take for granted the ability to come together and to lift one another up, to learn more about you. It's never, never enough. Father, I pray that we open our spiritual eyes and say we are in a battle and it's time we start taking the battle to the enemy. Father, I thank you for that opportunity. Give us an opportunity to stand. And having done all the stand, as we put on the whole armor of God, let us realize that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. The person across from me is not my enemy. The person that I'm debating with on Facebook is not my enemy. We battle against, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, and powers of darkness and high places. That's what we. So help us to stand strong, stand firm, stand up, and stand out. Thank you so much, Father, for that strength. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. All right. We're going to finish up with 731. Onward, Christian soldiers. We're going to sing the, the first and last verse of that. So if you're able, stand up. If you're not, that's okay. We're spiritually standing up. I don't know about you how I had before I sing this is that hmm, I wasn't sure I was going to be standing up this morning. I got up and my calves were all cramping up and tight and I couldn't hardly walk. Yeah, I don't know what happened with that. But uh, some massage chair flipped around and on my legs and got a hmm? blue emu. Yep, Johnny Johnny Bench. But uh, but yeah, so onward, Christian soldiers. We'll sing the first and last verse. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before. Christ the royal master leads against the foe forward into battle see his banner go onward Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. We're going to finish right there. Let's, uh, Brother Wayne, could you end us in prayer? Amen. All right, guys, don't forget the offering in the back. Uh, yeah, I started that song off a little high. I was like, yeah, we're not doing the second verse. <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, I, I thank you, everybody, for doing this. Come on over here, Kenna. Uh, all right, sweetheart. All right. So thank you guys for tuning in, and I'm going to check back and make sure that uh, 
See if we have any uh, any prayer request. That's right. Happy anniversary to Frank and Ella. Yes. Hey, Susan. Brandy. Oh, I love you guys. Yes. I've known Brandy for a long time. Longer than longer than the years we wanna we wanna uh, we wanna count, isn't that right, Brandy? Yep. I love seeing Brandy's got kids going to school and and we just love that and uh, it's just good. Good to be in. Hey, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for supporting Eight Isle Baptist Church. And if you would like to, uh, well, just that, let's see. Here we go. Eight Isle Baptist Church, 1098 Isle Road, Father, Virginia, 22938. And just put online on the envelope somewhere. And that way I don't have to, to look and see what it is and know what it is. And and uh, we'll get that to our finance person. But thank you for that. Uh, without you, we're not, we're not able to do that. And, and uh, we just, we love... Uh, <laughs> hey Joe, good seeing you guys. There you go. Uh, and uh, one of these days we're all going to get together and and be able to do that. But I want to just thank you guys for for tuning in. And uh, we, if you have commented on this, I'm going to put you into a little Facebook group. Hey Linda. Thank you. All right. Uh, there we go. I don't know why it was kind of messed up. Thank you, Linda. Linda's down in uh, good. Frank and Ella, that's awesome. Have a good week. And uh, we're going to, but what I'm saying is if you have commented in our uh, live stream, I'm going to put you in a little Facebook uh, messenger group. That will only hear stuff from me. Don't reply. Just let it'll just be coming from me as reminders. Okay, so uh, so thank you. Hey, Patsy. Yep. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off of here because I am gonna go get some food. Alrighty. Love you guys. Adios.